Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one true God. I mean, welcome to another episode of the Living Word of God. Greetings in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, as we are coming to the second Sunday after the Holy Feast of the Cross, the Gospel reading was taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16 verses 5 to 12 the theme of this gospel is jesus warnings to his disciples that beware of the yeast of the pharisees and sadducees take a heed and beware what is leaven in bible it is a small portion as we all know that of yeast used to ferment the dough to rise into bread or they used to ferment liquids into alcohol. A small portion is only required to cause necessary bacterial action for a large or extra large quantity of flour. The Pharisaic problem here, they are not big sinners, but they think that they are the only people who had a value in front of God. It is exactly what we have seen today, a narrow-minded religious exclusivism. It is a religious extremism, as we have seen in certain religions today. The East of the Pharisees, normally what they count, who is in or who is out. Now, what is the East of the Sadducees? They are the ruling elite class in the Jewish society. They have the power, they have the privilege, and they are the big friends of the Romans and it, who kept the Romans kept the Sadducees in power. Only the only intention of them is to keep the power rather than worshipping the God. They are they both are the hypocrites. In today's world, the Christian fundamentalist are the Pharisees that preach that those who are not follow their ways or taken their born again definition is not entitled for the eternal life or the kingdom of heaven. Exactly what the Pharisees were preaching at that time. They misinterpret the Christ's teachings and Christ's actions and try to exclude who are not falling in their ways. Whereas the Sadducees who want to cling their position at the expense of their faith. So, St. Paul dealt with the, the same issue in the Galatians church. In the Galatians, the book of Galatians chapter 3 verses 2 and 3, Paul's teachings had begun to teach the adherence adher of the Jewish law was required to be a Christian. So, please note, Levin is a common metaphor in the Jewish culture or for an invisible pervasive influence in a society. So why did Jesus Christ warn against the leaven of Pharisees? Number one, we are warned about the hypocrisy who can spread like a leaven. The Pharisees pretend to do the right thing while all their actions are malicious. Second, the antidote for the leaven is unleavened bread of sincerity and truth as saint paul said in first corinthians uh, chapter 5 therefore let us take keep the feast not with the old leaven but nor with the leaven of malice and the wickedness but with the unleavened uh, bread of sincerity and truth so what are the dangers of false teachings number one at first sight this seems unimportant in appearance, just as leaven in small quantity. It appears very innocent, like a Pentecostal prayers and a group gatherings. Number two, they are insulated into the soul, which are we are unaware, and silently spread the false teachings. Very difficult to detect. Very Crucial example is the non-denominational prayer groups that is clustering today and their teachings. 
In outer appearance, they are benign, but internally they are cancerous. Number three, the false teachings act gradually until they corrupt and consume. As Saint Paul said on once in Timothy chapter three, so the Pharisees are those they tied their faith into frivolous practices and procedures, but lacking the action in their spiritual life. Whereas the Sadducees, who are they, who are those who sold their faith for their personal benefits. So the eleven here is the wrong, false preaching or teachings. Here Jesus is warning to his disciples that beware of these groups who pretend to be naive and benign in appearance but can ruin and spoil the whole dough. Beware of those people who are around you today. Learn and keep your faith. Understand what the teachers of the church are teaching, and follow it. That is what today's teaching all about. So let me conclude it this year today. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.